As Patrick explained, uh, when you have a natural number and Lean is expecting a real number, then it will automatically insert a so-called coercion. Uh, and these can be really useful, but also a bit annoying. And that's why we have a dedicated session for dealing with numbers and special number types. And Rob is going to tell us exactly how to do, how to solve these problems. Okay. Um, so I think my screen should be sharing. Look good? Yes, looks good. Okay. Um, yeah, so as Johan said, the plan here I, I don't want to talk for too long. I think everybody's going to start by saying this, but uh, I basically just wanted to show off a few techniques uh, for dealing with what look like they should be very easy things to solve, where the, the obvious things to think of just don't work, um, or where maybe you say this is obvious, but you just don't know what to type into Lean. Um, so I want to start by saying a little bit about uh, numerals. What happens if I ask Lean about the number three? Lean tells me three is a natural number. So why did it pick a natural number instead of an integer or a real number? This is just a default. When we type in the number three, Lean has to choose something. Every expression in Lean has to have uh, a type, and it has to have a unique type. We can't have three be of both type, be both of type nat and real, um, because the type theory that Lean implements just doesn't support multiple types. However, this three that we've written isn't actually an expression on its own. It's notation for something a little more complicated. And Lean does allow us to specify that three um, is of a different type. This isn't the same three that we had before. And this is the catch. This three of type int is a different three than the three of type nat. So maybe I'll leave the other one up here. Um, check three, this is a nat, this one is an int, and we can go on, we can pick our favorite, uh, pick our favorite numeric types, check three of type real. If I had the complex numbers, I could have the complex three as well. The adding um, numbers. The adding numbers, sure. Uh, we actually don't need very much structure on a type at all to support a numeral. We basically need to be able to add um, and have a zero and a one, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into that for now. Um, okay, so I said that the natural number three and the integer three were different, which sounds weird, but really Lean does enforce their different things. Maybe I want to say an example um, where the natural number three, and here I'm going to explicitly tell Lean uh, that I want the natural number three. And I want to prove that the natural number is equal to the integer. The problem is this statement doesn't even make sense. This isn't something that's true or false. It's, it's a nonsensical statement because I can't have an equality between a natural number and an integer. Um, what if I delete that over there? Well, now Lean is saying this does make sense. The three, we can see where my cursor is, this three is of type int. Because I removed that annotation, Lean realized from the context this was an equality over the integers, and it should turn this three um, into an integer. So this is, our, my goal here is to prove three equals three over the type int. Um, so this is rule number one of this lecture. There are going to be four rules in this lesson. Rule number one says that if I write a numeral like three, like one or zero as well, any numeral, um, Lean will interpret it in the type that's implied by the context, if such a context exists. So here, when I just wrote three, this is an underscore, um, or this is a hole where I filled in three, and Lean knew that this hole had to be an integer, so it knew that the number I wrote three should be the integer three. Um, in a context where Lean is expecting a real number, if I provide it the numeral 10, then Lean will decide that that numeral 10 should live in the real numbers. But if I'm completely out of context, like I am in this first line where I write check three, 
Lean has no further information to figure out what three should be, so it defaults to the natural numbers. Um, so this is, yeah, rule number one. Numerals live in a type. The default place for a numeral to live is nat, but Lean will try as hard as it can to put them somewhere else. Um, okay, so, so this worked. If I tried to make this into a natural number, tried to force that first three to be a natural number, Lean complained. But notice that we natural numbers are embedded in the integers, so really it doesn't take too much work to make this make sense. In fact, it takes very little work in Lean. I'm just gonna, oops, um, I'm just gonna turn it around. And now weirdly, Lean is happy to make sense of this. How could that be? We, we couldn't prove that a natural number was equal to an integer, but we can prove that the, the integer is equal to the natural number. Let's look at our target now. So let's look at our goal state. And notice that Lean has inserted this funny up arrow on the right hand side. So what it's done is it's taken that natural number three and it's coerced it, that's the COE, it's coerced it from nat to int. So really, I'm, what I'm not trying to prove here, I'm not trying to prove the integer three is equal to the integer three. I'm trying to prove that the integer three is equal to the natural number three cast, to an int, cast into an integer. Um, so there's an extra level there, which, um, Lean has figured out in this, set, in this setting that it needed to insert that coercion to make the statement make sense. Um, it didn't figure it out before because of, um, well, some, some details that I don't need to go into. It, it, it elaborates things from left to right. Um, so at first, it decided that it wanted things to be over the natural numbers and couldn't insert an integer into the natural numbers. Um, so, Lean will try its best to help us out and insert coercions like this, but it's not always perfect. So one way that we can help it out, if we really want coercions to be in place, if I want this to make sense, I could put in an up arrow myself, just backslash u, and then Lean is happy with this. And it realizes we now want the natural number three coerced into the integers on the left-hand side. So, for the, uh, the second rule of this lecture, I wanna step away from these coercions for a second. We're gonna come back to these, but I wanna talk about arithmetic, just using numerals. How do I prove stupid things about numbers? Um, so how do I prove that three is less than five? This is, I mean, you really never think about proving three is less than five. Three is just less than five. Um, what is this three, by the way? What is this five? Well, there's no extra context here. I didn't tell Lean anything about the types of these, so they've defaulted to natural numbers. Um, there's one kill everything tactic for doing numeral arithmetic like this. Since no variables appear in here, I can prove this using a tactic called norm num. Conveniently for us, norm num doesn't care at all about what the types of these numerals are. So let's make these real numbers. Norm num works just as well. It doesn't care that these are numerals even. What if I have three plus 50 is less than five times 6,000? Norm num is happy. It will reduce arithmetic like that for me. Um, Basically, norm num will kill all trivial arithmetic goals that do not have any variables in them. Um, so rule number two of this lecture, if you come across a goal like this, that's just numbers and basic operations on numbers, plus times, divides, minus, um, try to hit it with norm num. Odds are pretty good it will work. Normnum will also do a few things beyond this. For instance, it will uh, be able to prove that things are prime. So if I want to prove that uh, that prime of uh, 11, I can also say by normnum. It doesn't know about a whole lot more beyond you know, arithmetic, primality, things like that. Um, 
So don't expect it to do everything in the world for you, but it's an easy thing to try if you only see numbers around. Um, so yeah, so rule number two, when you see numbers, try to prove things using norm num. The next thing I wanna point out is you're, you might find this a little surprising. What happens, okay, this first thing you won't find so surprising. Um, if I evaluate two minus one, um, eval is a command, uh, I don't know if it's come up yet in, uh, in, the, in this meeting, um, but it's just asking Lean, what do you think the, uh, the value of this expression should be if you give it an expression that has a natural notion of its value? Um, so we're asking Lean, what do you think the value of two minus one is? And it prints one, sensible, right? What does Lean think the value of two minus two is? Zero, still sensible. Let's just to make sure, what's the value of two minus three? Well, it's zero. Huh, maybe we weren't expecting that. But let's think a little harder. What are these expressions that I've written? What is two? What is one? Remember we said numerals default to natural numbers unless we give them more context, but I didn't give this any more context here. So this is the natural number two minus the natural number one. And the signature of the subtraction operator in lean, it's, well, there's some type class stuff, but it's alpha to alpha to alpha. So it takes in two elements of the same type and outputs a third element of that type, which means if it takes in two natural numbers, it wants to output a natural number. So here we output the natural number one, here we output the natural number zero. And if I have two minus three, I can't output the natural number minus one because that's not a natural number. So this is actually cut off subtraction. If you're not used to thinking about cut off subtraction, which, okay, let's be honest, not that many people are, um, this is a really easy way to run into weird behavior. You have two natural numbers, you subtract them because sure, why not? Um, and then suddenly the output is not what you expect. Um, why don't we want it to just print like an error or something? Because often you do not want an error, in fact. Um, there are many cases where having it, uh, so I mean, the alternative is basically that you would have to justify that every, um, every time you apply the subtraction operator, on natural numbers, you'd have to justify that the left-hand side is bigger than the right-hand side. So it, you have to make the function total somehow. It has no notion of a, a partial function. So to make it total, you need to give it an extra argument that justifies you're in a certain domain. And every single time you apply subtraction, you need to justify this. Um, with this cutoff subtraction, well, there are a lot of theorems that we'd like to prove about subtraction that really only make sense when the left-hand side is bigger than the right-hand side, um, and it's greater than or equal to. So these are, like, that, that inequality will be a precondition of lemmas about nat subtraction, but it's not a precondition to apply subtraction itself. And in practice, it makes it way more convenient to, uh, to write down expressions that involve subtraction you basically postpone these inequality conditions until you want to prove something rather than every single time you apply the function. Um, so, um, right. Same thing applies for natural number and integer, well, natural number and integer division. Um, I should note first, uh, just for completeness sake, if I evaluate this over the integers, we get minus one, just like we would expect. Um, so if you want subtraction that actually does produce negative numbers, you should make sure that you're subtracting integers instead of natural numbers. Um, and you might guess what's coming. Division has the same kind of issue. What is six divided by three? If six and three are natural numbers, well, it's two. What is... Um, six divided by four, it's one. Well, yeah, you know, no fractions in the, uh, 
and the natural numbers, but if you make this a rational number, then 6 over 4 will become 3 over 2, like you might expect. Um, so rule number three, always reconsider what you're doing if you find yourself essentially using natural number subtraction or natural number integer division. I'm not saying that you should never do it, but if you find yourself sort of translating your, your natural mathematical way of proving something into an argument that involves casually moving some natural numbers around sides of an equation, then maybe it's going to cause you a little more pain than you're expecting. It might be easier to work over the integers. It might be easier just to rephrase things so that uh, things stay on the same side of the equation, you know, whatever it takes. Um, this will save you a lot of trouble. Um, okay. So, yeah, actually, I have a, a, a quick example um, that I would like to do along these lines. Um, also, I don't really have a clock handy on my screen right now. But, yeah. um, very quick example. Let's say I have natural numbers, ABC of type nat, and I have the hypothesis that uh, B plus A is less than C plus A. I want to prove that B is less than C. Um, so maybe, uh, so I'm not going to say that this is the uh, correct way to do this in lean, but an intuitive way that you might think to start doing this would be to say, well, okay, subtract a from both sides of my hypothesis H and cancel them out. And then I have uh, B is less than C in my hypothesis. Um, so I get it in my conclusion as well. Um, maybe a better way to approach this in lean would be to try to add A to both sides of the conclusion and then match that with H. Um, but I'll show you another. Uh, I basically want to show you a sub goal of this problem. So I'm going to show you what is not the recommended way to solve this, but is one way you could approach it. Why don't we change our hypothesis? Instead of being about natural numbers, I'm going to make it about integers. So notice what I've done here. I've written the, the b colon z. I'm telling Lean, coerce this natural number b into an, into an integer. So my goal ends up having all of these up arrows in it. This is now an inequality over the integers instead of an inequality over the natural numbers. Um, and over the integers, I can do subtraction uh, like I might expect. Um, again, I'm not really saying that this is a recommended way to do this, so I'm not going to bore you with the details of this rewrite command. Um, just notice what the goal has become. I've subtracted. Uh, the integer a from both sides. Um, and now maybe I want to simplify this a little bit. I want to you know, cancel out the a minus a. So I think it's that, uh, which canceled on the left-hand side of the inequality at h. And I'm going to do that again. So I simplified my hypothesis over the integers, which was good, subtraction worked, but now I've, I've ended up with the hypothesis that's about integers, and I'm trying to prove something about natural numbers. Notice that there are no up arrows here. This B and this C are just our normal nats. So I need to somehow reconcile this hypothesis H um, with this goal that I have. So a while back, maybe a, a year or two ago, this was a super annoying thing to do. I mean, actually, in a case like this, we could, uh, it, it's not so bad. We could do something like simp at h. Um, so the simplifier will be able to get rid of those casts for us, which is nice. But in more complicated situations, maybe we don't want to call simp in the middle of our proof. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we don't want to simplify the whole thing. We just want to simplify part of it. We only want to get rid of those casts. Then, uh, then it's not the most convenient, and you know it doesn't always work. 
So now there's a, a, a collection of tactics that are all based around a core component for dealing exactly with this. The idea is that we want to be able to reason without really thinking about these coercions. Morally speaking, this goal and this hypothesis are saying exactly the same thing. So we should be able to say exact H. Link complains, of course, the types don't match. But what we can say is exact mod cast H. We're telling Lean this hypothesis is the same as the goal up to the positioning of these coercions that I don't want to care about. Um, so the mod cast family is, uh, is your best friend in a situation like this. It's based around a, uh, a core version called normcast. So I can write normcast at h. I can also normcast alone to, uh, to simplify the goal. Um, and the purpose of normcast is only to eliminate as many coercions from an expression as it possibly can. Um, it's, it's super handy because these things show up a lot. They don't add anything interesting to the problem. They just kind of get in the way. So normcast will try to, uh, to eliminate. Um, yeah, so normcast and exact modcast are the, uh, the big ones here. There are some variants called, uh, um, I'll just type these in comments. Uh, rewrite modcast, which acts just like the familiar rewrite tactic, except it does some normalization in between. There's apply modcast, which acts like apply. Um, we saw exact modcast. And there's also assumption modcast, which actually I, I maybe find myself using that one the most. This is for a situation like this, where what we want is in the context modulus and cast, so we can just close it like that. Um, so, okay, let me skip ahead to, um, yeah, let's do this problem. So th this is another sort of natural situation where these uh, misplaced coercions can show up. Sorry, um, can I interrupt with a question? Yes, yes of course. Um, so I, I guess that if you want to tell Lean that three is a complex number, mm -hmm. you might for some reason first coerce it to a rational, say, and then coerce rationals to complex numbers. You could. So does this modcast know all the layers of coercion? Yes. Which took place? So. Um, it, it should be able to simplify those things for you. Um, but not too much, in a way. Yeah, it, it, won't, it won't insert a whole sequence of coercions because that gets ugly. It, its ideal form is for every numeral to be native to the type um, that it's supposed to be. So if you wrote three and you wanted it to be a complex number, the mm -hmm. modcast tactics would try to make it three of type complex. They wouldn't try to make it three of type rational inserted into the complex numbers. And if you gave them three of type rat embedded into complex, mm -hmm. they would simplify that extra layer away. OK. okay. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, oops, I need a variable n of type nat. Um, yeah. So. OK, we're trying to prove something simple enough. We have a natural number n, n is prime. Well, if n is prime, then the reciprocal of n should be less than 1. What have I done wrong already? Oh, sorry, did I mute myself somehow? No. One, one over n is being computed as a natural division, which will... Yes, exactly. One over n is... Uh, Probably go down, to zero, go down to zero. Yes. Um, we'd have to prove that it was actually equal to zero, but yeah. So th this is just zero. This is true, but not really what we want to prove. So let's prove something better. Let's prove that uh, one over the real version of n 
is less than one. So I know that there's a limit in the library called one div LT. This isn't the purpose of this talk, so I'm not going to uh, tell you how to find this. But this is a limit that will move things around for us. It gives us three goals. First goal says one over one is less than the embedding of n. Um, and then we have zero is less than the embedding of n, and zero is less than one. So I'm going to handle these goals one by one. Um, if I use curly braces like this, it focuses only on the first goal. It just makes the screen a little clearer. First of all, let me get rid of that one over one. That's just numeral arithmetic. Uh, sorry, uh, wrong norm function. Uh, norm num will simplify that one over one into one for us. So that looks a little bit better. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my, uh, my knowledge of the library here. I know that there's a proof in the library that says nat.prime.1lt. Um, so let me check the explicit version of that. Uh, this is a lemma that says every prime number is greater than one. So I probably want to apply nat.prime.1lt. And Lean complains. We can kind of look here and maybe guess that it has something to do with this up arrow here. So let's try some other things. Uh, mod cast. So apply mod cast will simplify things for us. It will allow us to use this lemma about natural numbers and solve a goal that said something about um, an inequality over the reals. And now we just need to prove that um, that n is prime, which is a proof by assumption. Instead of using apply mod cast here, let me just show you something else we could have done. We could have said norm cast. And now we get an inequality over the natural numbers. And now we could just use apply nat.prime.1lt. Um, so this is just a, a slightly more verbose way of doing that. OK, and we have two goals left. Maybe one short comment. Yes. The benefit of this second approach would be that after normcast, you could probably use library search to find this crazy named lemma. Okay. And so then you don't even need to know the, that this lemma exists in the library. Um, that's a very good point. Thanks. Uh, so normcast, normcast is sort of like the, the cleanup version. You point normcast somewhere. It doesn't try to do anything fancy. It just tries to get rid of all of your other casts, all the casts it can, so that maybe you can see how to proceed or something like library search could tell you how to proceed. Um, so maybe we can do the same thing here. Um, I should say, uh, so right now we're again looking at an inequality over the reals with this cast natural number. I, I, I know that if I have a prime number, it must be positive. This is another fact in the library. Um, so let's try the same thing. Good, library search tells me what to use. Um, And then what's our final goal? Zero less than one. Interesting. What is the type of this? Lean actually doesn't print this for us unless we change some pretty printing settings. Um, but this is actually the real numbers, the, this is actually the real number zero, not the natural number zero. It doesn't really matter though, because it's numeral arithmetic and we can kill that over any type with norm num. So Potentially a lot of pain here dealing with the uh, silly arithmetic and silly coercions that really, really shouldn't be painful. Um, these two tactics, norm num and norm cast, are intended to get rid of as much of that pain as possible. Sorry, Ro, can I ask another yes, question? Of so, so if I understand correctly, if you wanted to prove 
the, uh, the statement, uh, the same statement, the HN, uh, not prime N, yes. one over N less than 10, but without the mm, column R. Uh, so I wanted uh, HN not prime N like this. Yeah, this is true. This is true. But it's false as well. Uh, so th this is true when I mean, you, you realize... you can prove it in Lean. Yes. You can prove it in Lean because you're proving it for natural number division, which is not the division that you really feel like it should be. Um, but isn't so, it the problem on the long run that, that there are things which look so... I mean, which are true? Um, so it's a sign that you should be careful about what your definitions say. Um, in practice, it's, I mean, it's not really a problem because if you wanted to apply this theorem, let's say that you prove this, you wouldn't be able to apply it in the situations where it would cause trouble, right? You could only apply it in situations where, well, you're, you're talking about natural number division, which you very rarely do. Um, so in some sense, you could prove it, it would look weird, but it would be innocuous. And, um, and if you actually looked at what it was saying, I mean, if you just kind of inspected the definition of natural number division, you would see that it's not proving the scary thing that it sounds like. So it is, it is a sign for you know, concern, right? It means you shouldn't trust lean notation at face value, but I think that's true no matter what. Right? You should never trust notation. You should always look at what the notation really means. So there's, there's really everyone who's ever written a computer program will know that if you type one slash five, you will very likely get zero, like in C or in Python or all sorts of things. So it's not a really very a new concept somehow. You've got to be careful with division of integers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not a new concept in programming for sure, but it's, also in, in mathematics, if you type one over five, you would never think that that was zero, right? True, so true, true, true. Lean, I think it's sort of operating at a funny boundary between two incompatible uh, customs in a sense. Mm -hmm. why, why is it that we're worried about this example anyway? I, I don't see anything scary about it, however you interpret division. Um, because if, if you were interpreting this as cast into the reals, do, I mean, do you want to say one of, Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I think he's, this is Maybe. not what he wanted to say, what, what Filippo wanted to say. I mean, this, this would be a little scary. No, this right? is fine, too. Right? No, that's, that's fine, too. Um, all right, how about? You want one of it? Yeah. No, that's not true, though. <laughs> no, yes, one over 10, sorry, yes. Well, smaller or equal to but, but, So this is actually not provable, because now this is... Yeah. Uh, smaller or equal to yeah. smaller or equal that, to that will do it. Yeah. Um, but because one over n is, is is zero, right? Yes. So it is also strictly less than yeah, one. This, over this is zero. This is zero less than or equal to zero. Remember, this is still natural number division on the right. So this is ah, zero okay. as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but this is false yeah, in for, for proof here. Yeah. So you cannot afterwards coerce these equalities. So if you have proven these in Lean, which you can prove, yes. and then you try to coerce this these, these statement to the real numbers, will that it work? That will not work, okay. Um, it, what, what you could write is that the, the coercion of one over n is less than or equal to the coercion of one over 10, but you would not be able to simplify the coercion of one over 10 as a natural number to one over 10 is a real number. Mm -hmm. um, and same for the coercing. You, you can't push the coercion through the division operator, in effect. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks. Which, yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I had one longer example that I wanted to show off, uh, but I also don't want to take more than a few more minutes. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to skip. Oh, could I ask a quick Actually, question? Uh, yes, sure. If, uh, if exact modcast and apply modcast and so on are so great, why don't the default exact and apply tactics just do this for us under the hood? Um, 
because exact and apply are called, you know, who knows how many thousands of times um, in MATLAB and like this is very useful, but there is an extra cost. I mean, it's calling a simplifier, it's building a simp set, it's traversing the whole term looking for coercions. So it, it's not free. And you know, if, if it adds, like given how often these things are used, they're very fundamental. Um, I don't think that it's really a, you know, practical from an implementation standpoint to do this constantly. Sure, okay. Not a satisfying mathematical answer, but it's, it's a practical answer. Um, since I just mentioned pushing coercions over operations, I said we couldn't do it over division. I should show you uh, another one. Um, Z of type int and M of type nat. Um, an easy way, if you want to push some coercions around, here my goal looks like this. So I have, I have a coercion of an addition of two natural numbers. This is going into the integers. Um, is a tactic called push cast, which is also related to norm cast. That will just shove that coercion through the addition um, to make it make sense. Notice that applying norm cast here wouldn't really do anything um, because I can't eliminate those casts completely. I have a bare integer z, um, so I can't get rid of it. And just to make sure what I said before is true, what if I had a division there? Oh, right, because going to integers, it will work. Uh, if I have subtraction there, it will fail. It can't push the coercion through natural number subtraction because, well, what if m is bigger than n? Then the coercion of n minus the coercion of m is not equal to this thing. Um, so just another tactic to add to your toolbox. Push cast can uh, also be useful for simplifying coercion expressions. Um, So, uh, what does so Patrick, pushcast look for to know whether it can push things through operators or not? Um, so pushcast, there's a uh, there's a, a effectively a database of lemmas in MATLAB. Um, they're lemmas that are tagged with a certain attribute, and pushcast will look for all of these lemmas and try to use them to uh, move the casts inward uh, as far into the expression as it can. Um, it actually will also um, accept hypotheses. If you really want to push this through negation, you could say something like h, uh, let me say m is less than or equal to n, and then I could say really try push cast, use the fact that m is smaller than n, and then it will manage to do that rewriting. Um, if you define a new type and you want push cast to understand your new type, you can actually add lemmas to its database that will uh, allow it to move casts around. And the same for norm cast. They use the same database of lemmas. That was the question I was asking. Do you know what the attribute is off the top of your head? Uh, it is uh, at norm cast. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so I think uh, maybe Johan or Patrick can correct me if they feel otherwise. I think for the sake of time, I don't want to work through my last biggest example here. Um, well, it's, it's a nice demo of some of these things again. I feel like it might be more productive for you all to sit down yourselves and start typing norm cast, norm num, exact mod cast a little bit on your own. Um, Patrick, yeah. Johan, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. people should be, should be trying now. Yes. Um, can, we, can we request the demo? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can certainly push this file uh, to, the, um, to the repository. Um, and there are there are exercises that are kind of the same kind of question that are in the uh, in the repository already. In the Tuesday afternoon exercises. Um, so, I'd look there so maybe well. it's useful to say which repository you are talking about because this is not yes. the tutorials repository. This is the uh, oh, workshop the repository. So, so what you need to to tell um, Lean Project is to get this uh, LT. Maybe I write it in in the in the chat. So you want to do lean project get lean for the curious mathematician 2020. It's already there, Patrick. You're too slow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
is lean project get uh, this. Yeah, should work. Okay, so this will clone something for you. Do a bunch of stuff. Sorry, I, I thought that we had already been directed to uh, to this repository uh, before. No, up to know we've used, we've been using the tutorials uh, project. Uh, um, okay, so once I've done that, um, then I can change to this directory. You see a bunch of stuff. I think as before, I'm supposed to copy some stuff. Uh, I, Maybe I won't work through all the details. Yes, but it, it, yeah, it's probably uh, safer in, in case we update. Uh, yeah. I mean, we will certainly update. So you should make a copy of SRC exercises uh, somewhere else. Yeah. So that um, if, because the, the exercises for the end of the week are, are not completely done. So you need to get pull to, to get those exercises at some point. So you really want to make a copy of, uh, of those exercise files. Afternoon, Nutley, and I thought it was called numbers that lay in or something uh, <laughs> no it's it's in the uh, uh, uh in the afternoon folder so it looks like the afternoon dot lean is kind of spurious oh okay logic and sex hmm. no so where did you put your exercises no. okay i think afternoon dot lean is what you want for this uh um, oh, afternoon. Okay, I, I take it back. Yeah. So, so in the in the Tuesday directory, there's a file called afternoon.lin, and those are the exercises for this. I'm I'm sorry about the uh, the confusion here. I thought that they were in a already known and better named place. Um, I don't see any art Tuesday. Okay, so maybe it's best to just go into the breakout rooms now, and then tutors can help you find the exercises if you're stuck. Sure. Um, 